Shalom. First of all, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim, Yahushai Bashim, Rechah Kodash, and double honors to the elders of the apostles at Great Millstone, who well. Peace and salutation, all sincere Achim. They're out there, of course, doing the work in all truth and sincerity. Yahweh is the true, almighty, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, who the world ignorantly calls God. In his only begotten Son's name is Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Yahweh and Yahweh Shai are the pure and only names of the Heavenly Father and his only begotten Son. All right. Bahashem meaning in the name, Recha meaning spirit and Kodash is holy, which I utter in the Paleo Hebrew, which is the ancient language that has been returned unto the Hebrew Israelites, which consists of the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Of course, since our seed have been scattered amongst the four winds, which are the four corners of the earth, you have some of our people that look like the heathen throughout the lands where they have been scattered too. But their spirit bear witness with our spirit, which is the spirit of the scriptures, actually. And they are Hebrew Israelites. And that's also through, of course, the line, the bloodline, which is through the father. We are the true anointed ones. We are the Hebrew Israelites by blood. The Lord's chosen people, the best people upon the earth, which the Lord is going to bring judgment to two-thirds of our people and to the heathen, the rest of the nations that are outside of the nation of Israel. Disclaimer, we are the Hebrew Israelites. We are not connected with any black denominated group, nor are we a black extremist group. We are the Hebrew Israelites by blood, as noted. Now, um, I'm the brother of Mappa from Great Millstone, playing tables camp located here in Great Babylon. And... Philadelphia, PA, and we have here an article which I have off of noxdews.com, and it reads, ex-coach wife, teen football player, agreed to sex to stay in her home, in which I'm going to begin this lesson with this particular lesson, I mean, slach, with this particular scripture, there's actually two scriptures, um, but the one I'm going to begin with is going to be in the book of Genesis, or in the headings, or Bauer Ashiath, in the Hebrew, 13, and it's going to be verse 13, and it reads and it says here, But the men of Sodom were were wicked and sinners before Yahweh, which is the Most High's name, which means He is, He exists, and He to be, exceedingly. In which we go into this word for exceedingly, we have Ma'ad, Ma'ad, which we'll go into the definition. It means much. Okay. So very much. The people of Sodom. Were, were exceedingly wicked. You know before the most high. Yahweh. In which. When you go into the history of Sodom. And the, of course those different five cities and such. Um, the Lord destroyed it for his wickedness. Which. It was all type of. Sexual immortal Immorality. Which was going about in Sodom and Gomorrah, all right, in the five cities, okay. Which I'm also going to get another scripture, which is also in the well, this will be from the Apocrypha, which is part of the original King James Bible, 1611, whom Esau Edom, which is the so called white man, the so called Caucasians, they are actual Edomites or Adawamium, they are the, the Lord's hated people. They are the wicked on the earth in which they, of course, went and tried to hide this truth, our heritage, and continually try to put a cover and cast over us and all, over all of the nations, even upon themselves, that they are, of course, they're the Edomites and the rest of the people. You have, of course, the, the chosen nation being Israel, Yasha Allah, which is the pr prince of the power, and you have all these other heathen nations, but the Lord chose one nation. So, of course, 
rule forever or Iwalam, which is the nation of Israel, which we are at the end of the Edomites rule and that's why they're being exposed today. So this is going to be the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, and we're going to go to chapter, or slot, verse 6. Wisdom of Solomon 10 and 6. It says, When the ungodly perished, she delivered the righteous man. Who fled from the fire which fell down upon the five cities. Of whose wickedness even to this day the wasteland that smoketh is a testimony. And plants bearing fruit that never come to ripeness. And a standing pillar of salt is a monument of an unbelieving soul. In which we know that the place of Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed through what? Uh, fire from the heavens. Okay, or Ash, uh, Mayan, Shemayim. Okay, which Ash is fire. And I said uh, Mayan means from, and Shemayim is heaven. Or, or uh, pertaining to the waters. Okay, so... We're going to go into um, now to the article. And America is going to be destroyed as well. Which this place is as Sodom and Egypt. Which you read that of course in the book of Revelation. The 19th chapter. Which I'll try to get it real. Or I believe it actually. It's actually. It's Revelation 11 and 8 that is. Right, which is a Rev 11 and 8. Which I'll briefly get this. This is Revelation 11 and 8. And it says, In their dead bodies which shall lie in the street of that great city, that being, of course, America, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, which dead bodies, or of course, are Israelites in a dead state. Okay. Those who, of course, that wander out of the way of understanding shall remain in what? In the, the congregation of the dead, roughly paraphrasing. Or shall be in the congregation of the dead, r roughly paraphrasing. You can get that, in, of course, in the book of the Proverbs. And, you know, we have our people. Yeah, there's Proverbs actually 21 and 16. Just reading it real quick. The man that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So our people, of course, had what? Discontinued from our heritage. All right, you read that in course the book of Jeremiah, the 17th chapter and the fourth verse. And of course, uh, we have been um, subject onto vanity. And so our people are engrossed fully within wickedness and into things of this nature, which is sodomy and sexual immorality, homosexuality, transsexualism and all of that. Now let's uh, continue into this article in which it says here, it says Kelsey McCarter was charged with six count of statutory rape in 2017 by the authority figure and one count of exploitation of a minor by electronic means, Angela Gosnell, Knoxville News Centennial. Now it says here, he wanted it. That's what the wife of a former South Doyle High School football coach says about the ten teenage boy she lured into her marital bed, in which we know that a woman, she is the possession of a man, and that bed should never be defiled by what? The act of... Which it, it of course becomes defiled when another man gets with that woman. Okay? That of course defiles the bed. Alright? Which, as I mentioned, is a, a woman is a possession onto a man where you have sex, which is marriage, which you join together. 
Okay, that, that constipates the marriage. And from then and there, okay, there shouldn't be any any um other man in that relationship, okay, entering into that one woman penetrating, okay, her. In which, you know, in the law, when you go to the uh, the book of, was it Exodus? It says, thou shalt not commit adultery, okay? And this is what happened here, okay? Which is, I'm going to bring out another scripture, but I'm going to continue on and read. It says, after her husband invited him into their home. So, it actually, the husband invited, okay, you have it here. Uh, it's, we're going to read the, st the, the story so we don't get things confused. It says, Kelsey McCarter, 29, is ax axing the Knox County Cir Circuit Court judge to toss a, a lawsuit filed against her and her husband, then South, Dakota, Co uh, South Doyle assistant football coach, talking about American football, which is just a sport. It says, Justin McCarter by... A 14-year-old boy, he's a man actually, but, you know, we're just going to go into Esau's system, which he considered him a minor, who says she repeatedly molested him after he moved in. It says she is currently behind bars after pleading guilty in Knox County Criminal Court in 2017 to a half dozen statutory rape charges. Okay, when you, you know, you deal with, of course, statutory rape, you have it where, let me get the definition, actually. Right, it says, has sexual intercourse with a minor, simple as that, which they consider him a minor, though he, of course, has reached puberty, and we know by the scriptures, a man becomes a a boy becomes a man at the age of 12, or when he, of course, hits puberty, okay? He, of course, can, uh, can, of course, do acts of sex and such, and, you know. He, but anyway, going on, you know, not to just sway off, it says the boy's lawsuit, it's a sock, it says here that, or excuse me, um, involving the boy, but she insists via the eternal Doug, attorney, Doug Trent, she's no rapist. Rape, rape means to seize or lay arrest or child molester. And the boy's lawsuit for damages should be dismissed. It says the boy claims that he suffered injury from repeatedly sexual abuses by Miss McCarter. Trent wrote an emotion. However, the complaint is repeat, replete in factual allegations allowing the conclusion that he was a willing participate, meaning gave consent and numerous sexual encounters with Miss McCarter, which you have to go into the age of consent and all of that with Esau and all of that, and his different states is different in different states, okay? But anyway, this is why in the scriptures, the Lord said that, um, this is a what? A adulterous generation. Okay. So I'm going to get this particular scripture. This is going to be the book of Mark 8 and 38. It says, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed, meaning Yahweh Shai, which is the world angry called Jesus Christ. Which his name is He Deliverer, or he, sa he the Savior. When he cometh in the glory of his Father, which is Yahweh, with the holy angels. Okay, so if you ashamed of the word of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, alright, the Lord, of course, is going to be ashamed of you. Alright, he's going to say what? Uh, Something uh, roughly paraphrasing in turn for me, but I have not known you. All right. You know, if you're ashamed of the words of the Bible and the scriptures, the true righteousness, then of course the Lord's going to destroy you. All right. Now, going on, 
uh, and and this is only for this is only open for the the nation of Israel, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native, Native Americans. Those, of course, of the confusion of face that look like the rest of the heathen, but their line goes back to an Israelite. The repentance is only open unto you. Okay, only you can uh, look back sorrowful. All right, you can only you can only you can repent. It's only our nation who have a former relationship with the Heavenly Father. Okay. Your son Yahweh Shai, who Yahweh Shai reconciled, meaning of course to make again friendly uh, us back to the Heavenly Father. Okay, now going on uh, to the actual article, um, and like I say, this is an adulterous uh, generation. You can see adultery is ra run rampant everywhere. Okay, men, okay. Are not ashamed to commit adultery. You have it here where a football trainee moves in. It says court records show that McCarter's moved the boy, who was a football trainee, of the assistant coach and his older brother. So you had two so-called young boys. All right, and to their home with permission from his mother. In July 2014, according to the lawsuit, the boys and their single mother were experiencing domestic issues, and Justin McArthur agreed to mentor them. So you had him just being the coach, which is pictured here. He's going to, you know, so-called be a father figure, which you have the host um, is um, the home, homes of of children are, are of course corrupted. Due to the so-called white man, all right, and his philosophy, he has it where you have it where single mothers are growing up these uh, young boys, and they're not but effeminate, okay, and they of course don't have the proper guidance in which they must receive from a man, another man, and I most not, must note a man of the Lord, a man that is in righteousness, whom have integrity. Because we know a lot of these men out here don't have any moral purity, nor do they have any sound wisdom. Which this is this this is here. So going on, it says Kelsey McCarter soon lured the 14-year-old boy into sexual a sexual relationship behind her husband's back, in which you have a, a wicked woman. Okay, which you know the scriptures speak about wicked women. All right, counted as a what? A dog or a collab, you know, and it speaks of her as through her, through uh, a woman, we all die. You know, that, but that wickedness is nothing but, um, it is uh, wickedness is nothing but little unto a woman, okay, because what? She lacks wisdom. She lacks, of course, integrity, morality. These things which a woman is ruled over, which is emotion and not logic. She, see, she seeks to serve her own feelings, her own self, which most of these women are narcissistic. All right. It's all about what she wants to feel. And when you have it here, this woman here, she's, you know, she sees this, these young boys and she, of course, what enters a sexual relationship, which is committing Adultery, all right, because this is this man's wife, okay, that's his possession, all right. So, going on, and it says here that the couple began, it says the big couple began, uh, the couple through though began fighting, and Justin McCarter told both boys to leave in 2015. He denies in the motion to dismiss file by Ju attorney Julie Anna. Trent in his marital discord involves his wife infidelity. That's a lack of what? Faithfulness, okay? Onto her wife, okay? Onto her husband. With the boy, he says, had no idea his wife was having sex with the boy. All right? So these women do these things, of course, behind the men back, okay? Which they. Women, of course, are duplicit. They they have duplicit. They practice duplicity, which they it's it, it's from the base of being deceitful. Okay, where 
they of course appear to you to be oh honest to you but when they're just completely wicked you know this, 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 you have to of course look beyond what is the visual you have to look of course in the spirit okay now going on it says here um actually i should start to go into some more these scriptures okay because uh you know i could deviate and make this all about <laughs> the woman but you know hey it is what the spirit wants to bring out all right so um I'm going to uh, continue forth because, you know, really uh, the act of adultery is, is punishable by the way of death. Okay, but here in, in this um, society, due to so-called white man, uh, you know, these women get let off the hook as you see it. Okay, she's seeking, of course, to be, you know, be let off the hook from even having sexual intercourse with this uh, young boy or so-called. Right. So we're going to go to the book of Habakkuk 1. The first chapter, I believe, in the fourth verse, which I'll retrieve that. Let me see, I was in the third. This is Habakkuk 1 and 4. And it reads, therefore the law is slack, which the law is in the Bible, all right? It says, and judgment doth never go forth, for the wicked doth compass a boot the righteous all right so they're all around okay surrounding the righteous okay mr righteous as a whole is the israelites okay but we're of course in being in oppression and slavery currently to this day under esau edom and the edomites rule in wickedness all right therefore wrong judgment proceedeth all right if you don't believe that the, the, the wicked are the, uh, the so-called white men, try to prove it through the scriptures. You're going to see that they are, okay? Malachi 1 and 4 in various scriptures, okay? Now, um, continuing on, see, I want to go, I, had, I believe I had another scripture too. In Habakkuk, the, the, the third chapter in the second uh, verse. Right, so yeah, this is Habakkuk three and two. It says, "Oh Yahweh, I have heard thy speech, and was afraid. O oh, Yahweh, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath. Remember chesed or mercy, which we want the Lord to have mercy on us because when you go into it, we have been." fully gross within the so-called the so-called white man society in which we have learned all of his ways the ways of these other nations as well being as the gentiles are okay in which our people most of them are in a gentile state of mind which we were in times past but now call unto the righteousness of yahweh shim yahushai in which we were we put off the old man and these dirty deeds and return to our lord yahweh shim yahushai not commit adultery in these different things Sexual mortality, immorality, cuck holding, and all of this. All right, because this dude's holding house with, you know, ch ch these uh these boys that are dealing with his wife. Okay, our boy. Um. Now, uh, I wanted to go back to the actual article, and soon close out. All right, so it says here, um. Yeah, uh, Chelsea McCarter continued the sexual relationship with the teen even after he moved back into the home. So he got kicked out, then he got moved back in, then she's back having sex with him, all right? In October 2015, he a, a, a convinced her husband to move him back in to their home. A few months later, the boy posted a new photo of Kelsey McCarter on social media and someone alerted uh, school officials all right which i can bring out um you know another law in the bible okay which 
you know, another man is not supposed to, do, to behold another man's wife's um, nakedness. Let me see. Uh, I believe it's, that's in the book of Leviticus. If I'm not mistaken, what chapter it is. Let me actually physically try to retrieve this at this time. Give me one moment. This happened so continue within this uh, devil's society. And it has to be put out. It has to be put out. All right. I mean, why would you want to live in a society in which another person, he sees it um, fine to sleep with your woman, okay? It, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. And she thinks it's fine to, of course, be promiscuous. I mean, this, this stuff is all wickedness, all right? It is all wickedness, all right? And let me see if I can get this scripture. Give me one moment. It goes on uh, into some other various laws and such. You know, different um, laws containing uh, pertaining to the nakedness. All right, of uh, particular uh, people. Right here, it says here Mar uh, Leviticus eighteen. And you have it in Leviticus 18 and 20. It says, I can start here at even 19. Also, thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. That's dealing, of course, with uh, sexual, ritual, uncleanness, her menstrual, etc., etc. But going on, in verse 20, the point, it says, Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her okay because you defile yourself okay and you commit adultery okay which is punishable by the way of death all right simple as that which i got the law right here you got as i know it exodus 20 and 14 thou shalt not commit adultery right it's repeated in deuteronomy the fifth chapter also here, Deuteronomy 20, uh, 22 and 22, if a man be found lying with a woman married to a husband, then they shall both, but they, they shall both of them die, both the man w that lay with the woman and the woman, so shall thou put evil away from Yahshua Allah, Israel, okay? Because if you don't, it just, of course, encourages this to happen. Judgment has to go forth. All right. It has to go forth. That's why in our kingdom, the kingdom of, of Israel, this stuff is not going to happen. And if it were to happen, you would get, of course, destroyed, killed. All right. Now, uh, I'm even going into this here. This is Hebrews, the 13th chapter of four. It says marriageable marriage is honorable and all in the bed undefiled but whoremongers and adulterers the most high will judge whoremongers deal with of course what one who is a seller of what a zana or whore a prostitute harlot right monger deals with one who selleth they sell whores or uh, you have these uh women okay because a woman is not supposed to sleep with another man. That makes If she sleep with another man, that makes her a whore via the scriptures. All right? So basically, that's it. I'm going to call it a lesson. All right? And I may go into another lesson because I have some other scriptures. But I don't want to make it that long. Call Halayim La Yehav B'Shem Rashai B'Shem Rechel Kodash. Double on to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone. You can, of course, read the rest of this article. You know, see, obviously, um, you know, the wickedness of a woman and the wickedness of uh, even men. Shalom.